Oh, there we go. Oh, good. Checking, checking. Okay. All right. So. but uh, we're also Westerners, and at least in my case and in Colleen's case as well, we, we celebrate this holiday with our families and friends. So um, we'll start out by our morning prayers. Oh, actually, we'll start out with the seven-line prayer, and I'll, um, I'll lead us in that. Just waiting for uh, my friend Eli to screen share for all of you. Thank you for your patience. We're always learning.
kid. Even though he was old. <laughs> that this is resolved with the Anyway, so let me just go forward on the path of that. So, uh, anybody has any ideas? Anyone put together today, which is really kind of very big anxiety.
And the relative self, like that, you know, it's kind of almost disappeared. And it's just a space. And so, don't, don't be scared, which is often some of the questions that it's all about self, personal self is fear. Continue. I thought it was just Colleen's describing what, you know, somebody who's really gone all out and done, you know, made their environment and themselves and maybe they're a high achiever in their career or things like that. Um, Let's see what this means. So long recently, um, Wonderful. Okay. So, so what, well, I'm going to speak. We can speak loudly so that our friends online can hear us. Can our friends online hear us? If you can, if you could give some indication that you could hear us, that'd be really great. Oh, oh, yeah. Like so Thank you for not leaving. That's just because I have this on. With us and having such great patience. 
Let's stop. Okay, I'm so if you can hear us, that makes us feel very, very happy. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sticking with us. So we're talking about, so, uh, I'll just give a little, it's a very short recap. So we're talking about compassion. We're talking about compassion for ourselves because we start there and then that radiates out to others. And we were talking about uh, suffering and how we're trying to kind of made a little outline. So the first topic and we've chosen is perfectionism. And Colleen, I'll just do a quick recap, has talked about perfectionism in terms of uh, you know decorating and getting ready for the holidays and wanting everything to be perfect and how that feels. But I'm gonna let her speak to that more and because uh, the way she expresses herself is best from herself. <laughs> but for myself, I was talking about perfectionism in terms of um, feeling um, inadequate to the point that I'm working way too hard to the point where I'm working so hard, I, I kind of don't know how to have fun really. I, I, if you ask me what I do for fun, I, I'd be having hard pressed to tell you, I'd probably make something up because I know it's quite odd not to go to, <laughs> you know, not to, um, you know, go out to lunch. I say no so often to lunch or go to a movie. So this idea of perfectionism has changed for me because of Lama's uh, input. So the, anyway, so now I'm gonna turn it back to Colleen because uh, I, I think what she has to say might be relevant to a lot of us too. So. Well, we, we could and then we could just kind of circle back if okay. we have time, okay. Right. Um, so the other issue that we came up with um, in terms of suffering was comparison and how we get these beautiful Christmas cards this time of year, maybe with the recaps of everybody, of everything great that's going on in everybody's lives. And it's really look easy to look at that and think, man, I, I just, I'm not doing anything, right? Um, we also talked about my neighbors. So mm -hmm. I've been in the same house about three years now and my neighbors on my street are really great at putting all kinds of crazy lights on the outside of their house and I'm not quite there yet. And I feel like they look at me like I'm just the Scrooge, like I don't really have any Christmas spirit. Like there's a lot of shame involved in this, right? Like, so that was part of where it was coming from for me. So, uh, you know, uh, for me, this comparison thing has been tormenting me. And, um, and so I figure, because I have this idea of being a little snowflake, so unique, <laughs> and I found out uh, quite a while ago, actually, that I'm not that unique. And um, But uh, nonetheless, uh, that this comparison thing is with me every single day in a certain way. And um, so, I, you know, the best solution that, well, we're not talking about solutions yet. We're going to do that later. But I, I think this comparison idea is... Um, it is, causes such great suffering because it's the opposite of gratitude. And, um, and I, I know uh, for myself, this comparison thing, uh, it, it, I know when it's happening that it's not real. I know that I'm, that I'm doing it to myself. I know no one's doing it to me. And I see people who have such, because of my work, I see people with so little, because I work in a Title I school, they have nothing compared to me if you want to do comparison. For example, um, my custodian, who used to live in Mexico, and he uh, used to be a math teacher in a middle school, and he moved here in his late 50s and is a custodian. And, you know, so kind, so generous. So like I, I said, oh, it must be hard to change careers so late in life and go from one kind of prestigious job to a job where people don't know you're a math teacher because his English isn't very good. They don't know how smart he is, way smarter than a lot of us. They don't know, and yet here he has a big smile. I told him my chair is so old, like a joke. It's a chair I sit at my desk. And he goes and gets me another old chair because schools are this way. <laughs> but just Oh. 
So, I think the family line uh, is so relatable because um, I come from such a large family. I mean, a lot of us don't come from large or small, maybe that's irrelevant, but in my case, it's a large family. So, therefore, because there's 80 of us <laughs> that originated from two people, <laughs> and so the whole world exists in my family. I mean, we're every race, it feels like, because, you know, this is America and we're all. And that, that's not the difference, though. The difference is political, religious, just all the things that can happen. But I realize, you know, uh, you know, I don't really, my, I have other family that I've created with friends. Um, coming together with my family is, brings up a lot of stuff every week, really. But on the holidays, it becomes quite more vivid. It feels like everything that's ever, like childhood losses, for example, come really, really so clear in like certain songs. I just want to share that because I know that a lot of people on the holidays um, have memories that are really beautiful as well and they miss them, miss people that they used, used to be in their lives and are no longer here. So I just figure uh, we should treat everybody as if this is occurring because either which way, even if they're the most joyous person on the planet, they're going to appreciate that kindness. And there's another, another very big chance that they have some kind of loss too that they're experiencing. Maybe not that day, but maybe the next day and we can help them. So anyway, I just wanted to say that about family. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's right that's um yeah this kind of uh, these things are really fluid I actually fluid. Right. yeah and so um I think Colleen's pretty much uh said it all in a way just just that truth that uh, in the holidays sometimes uh, you know we see people little families and we imagine um, like we'd like to have that postcard you know that kind of ideal family situation and we'd like our family to look like that they maybe even have a mountain in the background you know or something you know it just it just looks like uh, the, our Facebooks and Christmas cards, of course that's kind of what we present you know I, we, I do the very same thing but beneath that there's could like we don't know what's going on with people. For example, um, yesterday, I, I just, this is the first part about suffering, so I just wanna be real. I, I got a phone call from a friend whose uh, daughter-in-law had a miscarriage at five months, you know? Now that, they wanted uh, to, they're not, what is it, it doesn't really matter, does it? So they wanted me to pray for them. And I, I did, but I was just imagining what that would feel like to this young woman who uh, was, thinking this is going to be such a happy Christmas and certainly being pregnant and all the new things coming. And instead, she's holding her baby yesterday. We let her hold him for the day. And um, so, so I just mentioned that because you might see this little young woman without realizing it at Trader Joe's, you know, and getting food or something. And we just don't know what's happening for people. So I just wanted to mention that particular loss because that's very close to me. I've been thinking about her ever since just doing my own prayers for her. So.
My com my comparisons come up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, and, okay. So so I think we 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 just wrote down these uh, this list um, which we've gone through, and then we were going to talk about solutions. Um, yeah, but yes, yes. So um, we we wanted uh, people to be unmuted. I don't know if it'll work today because maybe in the chat they could share since our sound is having some difficulties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, because of the sound issue, we have to use a phone. <laughs> so, just, would anybody, you can use a phone to share. Would anybody like to share? If not, it's fine too. No, no pressure. Everybody's okay. Everybody's okay. pressure at all. Because sometimes those things, we don't, we, we, we just acknowledge them to ourselves. We don't have to say them out loud, or maybe if you like. But I did want to mention um, about uh, a, a video that's available with Lama Jimpa with Autumn. And I, um, if anybody is interested, it's a video about coming together with families on the holidays that Autumn did with, with Lama La not too long ago. And so if you, if you uh, wanna know more about that, you could um, just put your name in the chat and uh, I'll shoot you an e with your email and we can uh, give you a link to that. Or Autumn maybe could even share a link. I'm not sure if she's on to that particular, oh yeah. So that particular interview about the holidays because um, that was a good interview actually. So, um, okay. So, uh, so these solutions are not, uh, they, they're not meant to, it's not so simple as just like this solution, obviously. There's no way that it could just be this, when one, I mean, it is and it isn't, but uh, but we we just have some kind of things that we thought of that might be helpful to some people, and so just take what works and leave the rest behind. I guess that's the advice all the time. Yeah. So um, so for perfectionism, you were yeah yeah. Um, I think So for myself with the perfectionism uh, thing, um, it's a very, very difficult, like I, some of you might not have heard me because of the audio, but I was uh, mentioning how uh, I got a text from our teacher, Lama Jimpa, saying um, something to the effect like, stop, uh, stop trying to get rid of the personal self. And he, he labeled me a perfectionist. <laughs> and I, I was really shocked by that because in my case, it was related to how I don't uh, know how to take time to have fun or even, um, you know, to do those kind of basic things like people say, I'm gonna go do my nails or, <laughs> you know, those kind of kind of things. I, I, I've never done it in my life. I, I only shop at thrift stores. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of those things unless, uh, he said I was, uh, um, this is the authentic part, uh, so self-sacrificing. And, and he related it to my uh, background as a Catholic. <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh, that, oh, that got me, that got me. And uh, it didn't get me too much at the moment, but later it followed me all week long. I'm like, oh, because I've seen the things that made me feel good that 
are my shield, I guess, the things that make me feel I have value. It felt like he kind of put some kind of thing up, kind of some kind of magic spell on all the things that protect me, all the things that I use to protect my sense of value. Because he was telling me, you only need to be here. You don't, you're just, your presence itself is enough. And I don't know, really know how to do that. So maybe some of you can relate to that. Like you don't really know how to, that you can just be there without any particular purpose other than you're just being there, hopefully in a kind way. So that's what um, I, that's all I want to share about that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I I don't know how many times I have to have that fall apart to feel that truth. <laughs> because I've been called out constantly, as anyone who knows me knows, because mm -hmm. um, I make so many mistakes. Thankful for those mistakes because I am so humbled. And that's not a bad thing. So uh so then, so that was uh, one thing about perfectionism, that authenticity. I'm not sure everybody here, if this is the talk that you imagined and, you know, cause uh, it is a little unconventional, I think it is for me too, but I hope uh, it's a conversation um, that is beneficial in some, some way. So the, the next one we, we talked about in the beginning was comparison as a um, cause of suffering. And, um, that one, uh, you know, I found out along the way, we don't really get rid of these kind of things. Like we see ourselves doing it. Like I'm doing it like, it's like, it's just there and we can't get rid of things, but instead acknowledging that's the, so that that way it kind of takes the shift from what we're comparing it to ourselves to or the person perhaps. And then we think, oh, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm comparing. And so that, um, as a solution is, uh, you know, it's not just comparing somebody's that they're doing something we wish we were doing. It's not just like that. It's also comparing our struggles. Like I was mentioning uh, earlier with the, the custodian has struggles and I'm thinking outwardly, if we just listed his life and told my life, you might say this, his life was more difficult, but it really isn't the case. You know, it's more like within, within us, the, the, um, the place that uh, that has the peace or not, right? So um, I just I just copied this. It's from somebody else. So I don't want to take any credit. I just copied it because I liked I liked what the person said, and they said um, I'm sorry I don't have their name. It says um, empathy is not a finite resource. Love doesn't need to be rationed. Pain is pain. And this, this quote was regarding uh, comparing our struggle with someone else's struggle. You know, sometimes when someone shares their struggle, then we tell our struggle. So like comparing struggles, like you have this struggle, oh, I, that's pretty bad, but you know what happened to me, <laughs> you know, like that. So this is what this was written and re related to. So it says, empathy is not a finite resource. Love doesn't need to be rationed. Pain is pain. So this way, we kind of know when someone shares their struggle, instead of telling them our struggle, we can just listen to them. If we want to be a benefit, just listen to them and say, oh my gosh, maybe that's all that, maybe, oh my gosh, that sounds hard. Instead of my, they tell their struggle, but kind of share struggles. In that moment, that's the most generous thing we can do. And so, and this person writes, so what if we all agreed not to evaluate, dissect, tally, and rank each other's pain right now? What if we made a pact to lead with compassion instead? What if we keep our struggles in perspective, but also allow our, oh, I, I, I kind of cut it off, but... <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's right. I didn't mean it that way, but anyway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, okay, so then the family one, and, and then that's with Autumn's, you know, I really hope that Autumn can share that link. Yeah, but, it's all Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, we'll we'll try to make that happen because it talks about uh, Autumn made a, has really it's a really good interviewer and she asked Lamala questions that um, would be very helpful to people from all sorts of situations. That's I think so. So um, so is, uh, so should we just go down the list like a like a, to family like you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> that's right. I'm counting on counting on audience members about solutions. <laughs> oh, so friends, family's hard, and so I it, I don't think it's an accident that I left it blank. <laughs> and you know what? I found out I'm the hard one. That's why I left it blank because my family. If you talk to them and they and I leave the room, I know who's going to be talked about. <laughs> Oh, oh, the ouch. Oh, yes, I'm the weird one. Yes, I'm too sensitive, as anyone who knows me well knows. Oh, my gosh, you can't walk in on eggshells around Patty. Oh, my goodness. So I, I have to look at that. And that's, you know, a sense of humor will help. <laughs> yeah. Give yourself permission to leave. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, if you have an exit strategy, you can go into so many more situations because it's that feeling that you can't leave, I think. Don't you think? I don't know. I don't know. If you say, I, yeah. you could say, I'm only, I can only drop by for 15 minutes. And then maybe you feel safe enough to stay an hour or even the whole night. But you, if you say 15 minutes, you can feel like safe to go into a difficult situation. Doesn't, you know, sometimes they might grab you <laughs> and keep you somehow, but um, but you could say, oh, I, I wish I could stay. This is just one, it's like, sounds like a strategy and I guess it is, but but it's just a way, I think. I also still have a question Sarah's thing that she sent out to me. I don't think she's on here. Um, she said, what's yeah and have a little you know that's true because uh oh oh yes oh oh so Yeah, I 
Yeah. You know, um, I think that's really great that you brought up something like that, because I think, like I said, it's not so simple. You know, sometimes we can't escape in a way, not in the way physically escape. Uh, and sometimes like our teacher, Lama Jimpa, he trains us to have how to deal with that feeling of not being able to escape. Like I'm a fleer. So there's something about being in a situation that's un where you can't escape and your feelings are the, what's causing you this. Not, we, we look in our tradition, you know, we look at our, our, our very feelings of fear, anxiety, anger, whatever, is what we're dealing with. And so when you're in a, a, you're in a high level practice situation <laughs> where, and she's bringing up these feelings that are in you. So that's why when somebody is in such a, a very difficult, we have to be kind of still a lot actually, because they make a bigger container to be able to deal with those very difficult situations. It's not easy. In fact, um, one of the things that I wanted to mention earlier is that I think instead of happy is we're trying to, um, I think uh, a sense of, I wrote it even, because I think a sense of well-being, because a sense of well-being includes those kind of things. Instead of thinking we just want this one dimensional happy, we're including, you know, this kind of anxiety, or I'm not sure, I don't want to put a label on your experience because that wouldn't be respectful, but you know, just want to include all the things that we're experiencing in our container that we can include it with an, ex uh, like by through meditation, make a bigger container to cope with the things that come our way. Like that, that is the only thing that, that's what I do because I'm living with someone with autism that he's pretty tough and um, he talks to me nonstop. And so I have to practice a lot because my situation is he follows me around <laughs> and he's talking uh, sometimes in a way it's funny and kind of kind of endearing, but other times it's kind of difficult. So, um, and my and also at my work, but I, just to, I think by you bringing up this kind of situation that's inescapable, I think some people might really benefit from what you share, you know, because I don't want anyone leaving here thinking, oh, they have no idea. This is really difficult, you know, so that's very helpful, I think, Elizabeth. So, um, well, uh, actually, I, I could talk about this little thing here that might be helpful to people. But before I do, maybe I'm not sure. Are, are people able to, through the chat, ask any questions or any comments? Is, are they able to? Is if anybody has a comment or a question, uh, just put them in chat, and Eli will uh, will let us know what your what your comment or question is, if you wish to. <clears throat> so, um, I, I have this uh, very small thing that I, I wrote, um, and this is maybe helpful. So I will. I'll just go ahead and read it, and it, it goes this way. I wrote, I think happiness is a vague word. I think it might be, a, I, I, I said, like I said earlier, that well being might be a better word for our purposes here. Because the phrase well being includes all the emotional states, including the deep sorrows that sometimes come. And it's possible we can have this well being even if we're sad. I've seen our teacher, Lama Jimpa, with tears in his eyes. And I'm, I'm some of you who know him, I'm sure if you've known him long enough, you've seen him too. But there is this quality about him that is very spacious and sense of well being. He's not trying to escape, he's fully present. So that's what I was wanting to express because I think sometimes, you know, I, I don't want to be us, Colleen and I, to be misunderstood that we're just, um, you know, 
everyone wishes to be happy. The Dalai Lama says it all the time. I mean, it's a part of the human condition, but we know that the human condition includes everything. So, um, you know, I just wanted to state here because, um, you know, we're talking all about these the suffering and the solution. There's so much available to us from other people that know a lot more than, than I do. I, I feel like Colleen's work brings her in touch with these things a lot more in a, in a deeper way than me, but um, people, you know, we, we look outside ourselves for happiness oftentimes, I certainly do. But when we, as we go along the way, we learn that the happiness and unhappiness and everything, we gradually start to kind of get this little glimpse that it come, it's not like that. There's something in within ourselves that's possible. And that's that's the path. So I just wanted to mention that. And then I, I um, I've been trying with Colleen's help today, especially I've been trying not to be such a reader because I'm so nervous because of the perfectionist part that we talked about. <laughs> and I was getting nervous to just go off the cuff because I get afraid to say the wrong thing. But um, so I just wrote this. So how do we approach our quest for happiness? Very often we look outside of ourselves. We think that if we could have this or that or all the conditions lined up, then we would then be happy. But this is not the case because to have everything in the outer world is unrealistic. And so when things go wrong, as they inevitably will, our happiness leaves and we cannot control our outer world. We do not have to look very far to see people who outwardly have everything and yet inside are completely unhappy. And of course, it's desirable to have leisure and education and all those things. We all know people who experience very difficult circumstances. We've met them here at our temple, teachers that have visited that have spent time in prison for a decade. And, and you see a peace around them, but they've managed to keep serenity, inner strength, inner freedom. So when we ask ourselves how to nurture the conditions for happiness, the inner conditions, and we need to investigate which of these states we need to investigate. So that's that's through meditation we can do make this investigation when uh, difficult circumstances arise. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go back to you, Colleen. I don't know if I made a very good segue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Maybe especially like, um, you know, the hard part is I keep finding out over and over that I'm the difficult one. <laughs> I know I've said that earlier on, but I found out that I am and I can see it and I even see it arise, the difficult patty arise and uh, uh, especially this quality being, uh, you know, uh, you know, just misreading situations and um, I'm not trusting myself to handle situations that inter that, that kind of thing. So that seems kind of uh, like there's a very important step that I've just gradually, very gradually begun to take. I'm so, so I feel like I'm just starting out actually because I used to say those things, but it didn't really mean anything to me. It didn't, it wasn't true in my heart. In my heart, I know now, I know now the cause of um, my suffering is, um, well, in our tradition, we call it, you know, uh, uh, being very self-involved, mm -hmm. whereas the solution is bodhicitta. And so some, that word even has become to be more meaningful to me, the bodhicitta, to awaken for the benefit of all sentient beings. It's such a lofty thing to say, but that's what we're, that's what our wish is. So just having the wish itself is really powerful. And everybody, uh, you know, everybody wants that. Kind of, oh, the solution is connection, yeah. warm heartedness. You know, a lot of times we do all kinds of crazy things because we want that connection. But um, the way to get that connection sometimes is a lot simpler than we try, <laughs> you know, like, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, the connection is, is the gift for the holiday, I think. Like, listen to people. And we end up feeling, wow. I, we end up having a sense of value because we, why wow, listen? I've been told I interrupt. I think I'm interrupting Colleen right now. <laughs> so I think so. I don't want to do that so much. Anything that I talk about in the box, the solution in the box, my 
isolation of mass is not going to be possible. It's not going to be a solution no matter how careful you are. When it comes to meaning and properties, it's like one direction or another direction. You know, you know actually, a, a, a big fan of creating a function that works. Uh, you know, something that's compiled to a particular function to a problem that you solve. And to me, it'd be great to have a lot of that kind of stuff that you can do that is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Um, you know, like uh, sometimes, you know, we think, oh, it's too much. I want to even thinking about that person is too much for me. It'll bring me to a dark place. But the actuality is that uh, we can just bring them right in and 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 in our hearts and include them in in our uh, in our our day. And just that, and you know, you still have that deep missing for sure. But you know, it's it's the real suffering is just trying to push it away make a big old wall like a wall that doesn't work it just instead instead of expanding our world we're closing off and and what in this interview that i want you guys to listen to if you have time with autumn Lama talks about that that people when they're depressed for example or feeling great loss some oftentimes they isolate and they know they're doing better when they start to reach and, and connect with others so okay yeah. Oh, I don't know if I said Something. that. You sure you said that? <laughs> that sounds good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of cliche sort of sounding in a way. I probably it, heard it from it, someone else, but I think it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, um, well, I hope to don't mind me saying this, but she got this idea to um, for our neighbors around around because uh, we our temple for those of you if there's any of you that aren't from our temple is in a neighborhood and uh, we wanted to express to them our gratitude for you know because sometimes we'll have events and we park on our street and or just you know even beyond that just being our neighbor you know and sharing the space with us and so we want to show them that we're glad to share the space with them so uh, some people have brought cookies and we're going to pass them out with a little card from from us so that i think that's a definite way to cheer yourself up just to drop off cookies my goodness I mean, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah so i agree with Yeah. The noble fir trees. <laughs> we, you know, I, we were going to divide it up like this category is like four noble truths, but instead we just did this like this. I hope that people are benefiting from it in this in this format. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um. So, so that is the idea. I think at the end of the day is this sense of reaching out beyond ourselves to help others, and a sense of gratitude for whatever, wherever you are. You know, some we can be grateful that for our trouble. Like I do a practice where the very things that are difficult for me are called my jewels, and that sounds kind of odd until you realize it's because my uh, neurosis and my the things I'm embarrassed about and, um, you know, the things that I didn't realize everyone could see so clearly, <laughs> you know, my insecurities, that those are the things they, first of all, keep me humble, which is always a good thing. Secondly, I'm not on a mountaintop looking down on all the poor people below. I'm right. I understand a lot of things from my suffering. So you can think of your things, your obstacles or whatever, like your jewels too. Like, oh, I understand. Like, you know, if it's maybe even even things, not even, but like everything, like drug addiction, depression, 
dysfunctional family. Like we can be good listeners when we understand ourselves. And then it doesn't mean we want to stay there, but we can, we understand ourselves. It's a, we can be like a mirror for somebody, a nice, kind, compassionate mirror. Like, oh yeah. And they'll, and they'll feel it. They'll know. They know you when, don't we all know when someone understands? It doesn't mean they have the exact same experience because that doesn't, it doesn't have to line up like that. But we know when somebody understands and we know when we're not being judged and we know when they believe we can do better. We just know it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, um, I, I'm just, I'm just glad for this telephone. <laughs> and, and now we know if this were to happen again, we can maybe resolve it a little sooner with the telephone, but I think we're going to get better and better with this uh, technology. We are just are beginners with it. And so we don't know we don't know it yet, but we're putting together a technology team that um, going to work out all these kinks. And thank you for your patience. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I guess we couldn't do our closing prayers unless um, it doesn't look like there's any comments or anything. So Eli, well, there was no comments or anything today? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're going to do dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chanvizik, Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroy the entire host of Mars. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Song Jagpa, I make requests at your holy feet. So uh, thank you everyone for coming. And I hope to see uh, some of you in the new year. And um, I wish everybody uh, very uh, happy, happy and peaceful holidays. Mm -hmm. Oh, well-being holidays. Yes, well-being. That's right. I think I think so. Well-being holidays. So, so uh, may you be gentle on yourselves and on the people that come into your lives this week and and beyond. All right. Bye, bye, friends.